let's just start with you know like um, how you view sort of like in just in like a broad sense like uh, culture mm-hmm. and what it means to you and mm-hmm. like you know personally what it means personally. to you personally for me you know um like when you look at folklore for example mm. Like there are so many definitions that people say that it's a set of customs and behavior and practices and mm. narratives and all that. But for me, um, folklore at the end of the day is the cultural produce, mm. right? It's like it's a cultural produce, and I say it because um, usually we have this notion that folklore is something that is relegated only to the past. Mm. So we talk about stories, mm. right? We talk about, we're talking only about old stories. Mm. We're not talking about the new folklore. We're not talking about urban folklore. Right. We're not talking about a situation of post folklore, like you know, beyond folklore like mm, that. Mm. So we are usually seeing only the traditional agriculture based folklore mm. that is there in Naga society. Usually in our Naga society, mm. when we are looking at folklore or when we use the term folklore like that, we are usually relegating using it as in relation to the past mm, mm. of something that's already happened like right, that. Right. And something that and we unconsciously we perceive of it as something that has no relevance to our lived experience today. Mm. Right? But if you look at research, if you look at our narratives, mm. if you look at even our proverbs, you will we will you will see that all these elements, like whether it's a tale Mm. or your shawls or mm. the way you cook your food mm. or the way you ferment your food mm. all of these things are folklore as well mm. and all of these things are part of the legacy of mm. folklore today mm. and i think that um it is wrong for us to view it like that mm. to mm. to view folklore as something that has no relation to the yeah, present no relevance world. today like yes the, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. Mm. and a lot of an- another thing that i've noticed in our you know, is that this hung uh, this um this attitude that one kind of folklore is the pure folklore mm. right mm. i say oh this is a fake folklore Right. It doesn't. That people say that. Oh, this is uh, nakli, mm. or this is. Oh, this is not the story. This is that is the story. Right, like right, that. Right. Similarly, with our languages, we have a tendency to say that. Mm. You know, this our language. This is not our language. This is not the right way of saying things mm. like that. Nah. Mm. But um, with folklore, mm. especially, we have to know that there are supposed to be versions and variations because folklore is something that is spoken. especially mm. with in relation to narratives or uh, it could be proverbs or it could be poems it could be uh, songs, songs yes, yes mm. right mm. narrative poetry uh, the tenyedi culture has a lot of narrative poetry mm. and uh, the angami culture is rich very very rich mm. and especially in terms of narrative poetry and with the and especially it's very significant that you also have the use of meter in your mm. poetry which is mm. simply amazing to me there are there are supposed to be versions and variations mm. uh, so a uh, folk tale or an oral narrative um in um rengma mm. country mm. or in the rengma area may be shared with um um folklore in the vokha area mm. so in fact um there are folk songs okay um that hybrid folk songs mm. that infuse elements of angami and rengma in lotha corpus of folklore okay so i think it's called kashi there is a folk song a mm-hmm. uh, style of folk song actually okay. uh, it's called tsungon tsungon is actually the lotha name for angamis okay okay so what does it mean <laughs> uh, i guess it means angami okay. i guess uh, i'm not sure okay. um so tsungon and that is shared with the angami people mm. okay and uh, we have kashi which is like which is shared with the rengma people i think okay. right or oh, and uh, that is a uh, kind of hybrid folk songs that we have so right. versions and variations mm. are a part and body of mm. a folk tale mm. or a folk element whether it is a folklore or folk life aspects of folk lives so, uh, like you can see in our um, in our um tattoo styles you can mm. see it in the way our motifs are woven into our shawls yeah. right and you can see that in um the our, the way we eat food uh, the way we practice um, fermentation mm. or smoking mm. right like that so if you notice across the across even the things or even the things that are not there mm. like for example we don't have um culture a historical culture of rearing um milk okay 
like we don't have cheeses we don't have varieties of cheese mm. for example mm. like that and you will see that this is a characteristic that is there in almost every naga tribe that we don't have that kind of culture mm. like mm. that na so yeah so versions and variations are part and body mm. of the um, folklore item mm. and also when you look at um when when you look at these um things called folklore right uh, a lot of times we think that it has to have ownership like it is composed right, by right, somebody right. Mm-hmm. but the idea is that the lore whether it is a narrative whether it's a proverb okay it does not have an author mm-hmm. and that is very very important mm-hmm. because the lore has to be owned by the folk which is the community right right, right? right. so that is another aspect mm-hmm. so for me folklore is a uh, cultural produce so i don't see it as something i don't see it as a relic or a byproduct of the past mm. but i see it as something that is very much an ingredient in the day to day lives of our lived reality today mm. that's fascinating i mean and when you were talking about you know like how um, uh, <clears throat> there are different variations and yes. you know one of the things that i've recently been getting deep into is like i told you about this is about like you know our origin story yes and uh, shout out to dr akho who wrote the yes. he recently launched his book uh, tracing my roots mm-hmm. and which i just devoured so quickly because it was just up my alley and what i was getting into and how like when you were just talking about uh, you know like everyone has their own versions and some people think theirs is right or whatever yes. it's the same with origin story right exactly it's like everyone has different uh, sort of variations and all but if you actually look at it Yes. from a broader perspective depending on which narrative you want to go with and believe in then it it all ties into like a common story or a common theme and exactly. they just have their own variations of it and yes. more importantly because ours is like an oral culture, uh, culture yeah. right so like um you'd expect the variations with yes, you, to, you know like yeah with generations that passed down and yeah exactly and that is why anything that is oral mm. or orally passed down is bound to have these versions and variations because of the fluid nature of orality mm. right if you look at orality right uh if you look at oral cultures uh, versus um literate cultures mm. right our uh, cartographic cultures whatever you call it um they the way the mind even the way they structure the mind is very different mm. right so in uh oral cultures right um obviously now in 2022 there are no purely oral cultures we have uh write scripts we mm, have mm. things to aid us right, right, in right. the writing process mm. or the remembering process but w- uh, when you look at like purely oral based cultures mm. right you are also um you, uh it is very in some sense it is very human mm. you know because it's so fluid okay and um like it is so fluid it is so human in that sense mm. because it uses so much of your uh mind space mm. but when you have aids mm. like radio or mm. writing exactly you are using that as an aid to remember something right right but when you are when you have so the the, the power of the mind the psychodynamics of orality mm. is just amazing i'll give you a book after this uh, i'll send it to you okay. it's an it's a lovely book by walter j ong mm. uh, it's on uh, the, on the technologizing of the world Okay. And so you will see there I don't want to just go so much into yeah, a lecture yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but the way the oral mind works and you will find that so much of our culture our historic mm-hmm. our history can be seen in that light 